Yo, what's going on? So today I'm going to be talking about that new Billie Eilish album uh, entitled Happier Than Ever. I think this is her studio, I mean, sophomore studio album, I think. I don't really know. I can't tell. Uh, but I've just kind of been listening to her every now and then ever since um, Ocean Eyes first made an appearance on SoundCloud way back when. It feels like it was kind of a lifetime ago. Uh, so without further ado, you know the drill. Uh, let's can get right into it. I'm going to give my play-by-play -play for the album. Uh, there's a total of 16 uh, songs on this album, so it's kind of a long one, so I'm going to try to keep it as brief and condensed as possible, just going to give you my initial thoughts and a couple of other things that I had to say. So jumping right into it, the first song, Getting Older, uh, the song is really bare, really stripped down. I mean, you've got her vocals, which are accompanied by some synth chords. Really short and staccato. Um, you know, she brings her uh, trademark airy and breathy vocals that, you know, she's known for. Um, and I think the stripped back nature of this song just kind of forces the listener, listener to take a seat back and just absorb what she's saying. Just kind of riff through the motions, get a sense of what she's talking about. So um, that was kind of cool. Uh, there's a little bit more of that on this album, but you know, a lot of other things as well. Uh, moving on to track number two, I Didn't Change My Number. Uh, this song has got a boom bat beat, and the vocals I noticed were turned up really high, which is funny because I know I know that her vocals aren't usually inherently loud. Uh, so the mixing felt a bit strange, but the vocal delivery felt really playful and uh, almost mischievous on this song, which was fun. It was nice to listen to. Um, the production features a slightly distorted synth, uh, which adds, you know, some groove to the song, which is really cool. Um, I'd describe it as tasty and crunchy. Uh, moving on to track number three, Billy Bossa Nova. Um, as the title implies, this song has, you know, that Bossa Nova flair to it. Uh, I, would con I would describe it as a sensual and warm song. Um, I really love the, the mixing on this song. There's a lot of uh, beautiful colors that are coming together to create a really interesting taste. Um, there's a lot of reverb on the harmonies, which definitely is going to add um, a lot of uh, depth to the mix. And I love layered production. I mean, who doesn't? So it sounds really cool. Uh, moving on to track number four, My Future. Uh, this song's really melancholic, and I I love the tonality of the song, and the choices also made in writing the melody of this song, um, and then the sudden beat drop that makes an appearance kind of came out of nowhere, but it didn't feel out of place, so it it felt pretty appropriate once you kind of get used to hearing it because it's a really stark difference from the intro to once that beat hits. Um, I can really get a sense of her growth on this song, uh, not only as an artist but as a person and. Honestly, that applies to the entire album as a whole. Uh, moving on to track number five, Oxy talking. I thought I was reading it backwards or messed up, but anyway. Um, this song is a lot more upbeat. Cool use of her breaths to accentuate the rhythm in the song. Um, kind of adds a bit of, not groove, but just, you know, uh, a steady, true, in the true sense of the word, a steady beat. Um, I especially love the pre-drop, if I could phrase it that way, uh, kind of like the build up to, I guess the chorus or a lot of people, the word, the term drop has been really, uh, popularized. So, um, that was a really cool section of the song. She hits like a falsetto register and her inflection sounds like nothing that I've heard from her, uh, thus far, like in her musical career. Um, so that was pretty sick. And not only that, the vocals have like some delay thrown onto them. So it makes the listener feel like that meme of SpongeBob where he's like floating in midair and, you know, he's ascending. Uh, that's, that's what it sounds like to me. Um, and then the beat drop feels like a mix between something sinister and something sensual. So it's almost like, um, someone's holding a knife to your throat and you're kind of terrified. Uh, but the person's also really hot, so you're kind of enjoying it. That's that's this song in a nutshell. Uh, moving on to track number six, Goldwing. Uh, this song features some ethereal mixing on the vocals. Uh, she's singing at least four different... No, th there's four different sections to her vocals, so at least four different harmonies that I could hear in the intro. 
Uh, I, there might be more, honestly. Um, and I think this would have been a highlight. This song as a whole would have been a highlight for me if it had had been a little bit longer. But it kind of ends as soon as it starts. So I was um, almost a bit of underwhelmed. But uh, it is a cool sound. Um, moving on to track number seven, Lost Cause. Uh, there's a really groovy bass line on this song. Very savory. Um, and I'm not sure if it was programmed or if it's an actual bass uh, bassist like performing. Uh, but either way, that carried the song. Uh, in my eyes, I uh, thought it sounded really great. Um, and her vocals are really solid on this one. Um, and then the subtle addition of reverb in certain parts of the song uh, towards the, well, the last third of the song is maybe not even, not so subtle. Uh, but it, uh, it definitely is exquisitely done and overall a really decent song. Uh, track number eight, Haley's Comet. Now, there's really soft percussion on this song, which was almost refreshing to hear. Um, I think when I think about contemporary pop music, uh, everything seems to be really loud, really hard, turn everything all the way up in the mix, should sound great. Not always true. Um, and, it, it, you know, if it doesn't knock, it's kind of rare to, ha rare to find on the charts. Um, obviously, this is not going to apply to all music ever. Definitely not. Um, but it was just something that I noticed and found myself thinking about as I was listening to the song. Um, there's also some nice guitar playing, which accompanied the ballad, and it felt very comfortable. Um, th there was a strange filter added to her voice towards the end of the song, and I could hear some, hear some subtle chords added to it as well, which was kind of cool. Uh, interesting decision made there. I personally wouldn't have made it, but it sounds cool. Uh, moving on to track number nine, Not My Responsibility. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Billy's like sudden and vocal entrance into the song uh scared the hell out of me and the filter heard from, as as heard on bad guy um you know when she's like on the bad guy in that song uh that makes an appearance here which was kind of cool um but she's not really singing this piece it's more of like a spoken word piece uh so she's just kind of speaking or uh, no not singing not rapping either uh the song definitely feels like a huge middle finger to her critics which was kind of cool uh, because of how stripped down the nature of the song is sonically, there's not too much going on. So that forces you to just say, I mean, you have no choice but to listen to what Billy's saying. Um, so I respect that. Uh, there's, you know, the subtle percussive elements, those chords, and then her voice, and that's it. Uh, she's really getting, in, getting into the face of those who make negative comments about her. So I can respect that. Uh, moving on to track number 10, Overheated. Um, the production shines on this one. I don't really have a lot to say about it, uh, but it's got a Euro, like a Euro dance esque um, gated synth playing, which was sick. I love hearing stuff like that. Um, not super common, especially nowadays. So that was kind of cool. Um, shout out to Phineas and the engineers and pro um, producers that worked on this album. Whoever they may be, I have no idea who they are. Uh, moving on to track number 11, Everybody Dies. Uh, I just have one word. This song was raw. Uh, that's it. Moving on to track 12, uh, Your Power. <laughs> and they said guitar music was dead. Um, I remember hearing this song uh, when it was released as a single uh, like a month or two ago. Might have been longer than that. Uh, and I remember enjoying it back when it was re released and hearing it now in the context of the album. Uh, not only does it fit like thematically not only does it fit like a perfect puzzle piece but it also stands out on its own uh it's got very distinct mixing and the guitar accompaniment on this song makes it pop out a lot more when i compare them to compare it to the rest of the songs on the album uh so her singing has gradually improved and when it's mixed in different ways uh you can get really colorful songs and really interesting textures sonically um so i really enjoy that um, moving on to track 13, NDA. Uh, to me, the most noteworthy thing uh, at the beginning of the song was that uh, the there's some pizzicato, like on a violin, uh, which adds a lot of character to the song. And the track features like some auto-tune and distortion on Billy's voice, which honestly came out of left field. Um, the section kind of reminds me, like it, it features some percussion that reminds me of like some Kanye or even Travis songs that have, uh, they kind of dip into the EDM side of things in terms of sample choice. Um, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, uh, that, that was cool. I'd love to hear more of that sound from Billy. 
Um, I don't know. It just kind of appeals to me. Not that the rest of her music doesn't, but it appeals to me a little bit more just because I am a sucker for electronic music and the many cool, uh, tasty samples that you hear in, in percussion for electronic dance music. Um, and interestingly enough, this song kind of bleeds into the next song. It's got like a seamless transition. Uh, the BPM is the same. So once we hop into the next track, uh, 14, entitled Therefore I Am, it is tonally a bit distinct from the previous song, uh, but it definitely feels like a continuation of that song just because they mesh, um, you know, they transition right seamlessly right from one to the other. Um, but it feels like Billy's on this song, it feels like she's about to start rapping and she kind of doesn't. Um, maybe that's a good thing. Um, it, she dips into more of like that spoken word kind of delivery. Uh, but it's not like the, um, like actual spoken word. She's just kind of talking into the mic. Um, anyway, there's a really groovy baseline on this one. So I enjoyed that. Uh, moving on to track number 15. Uh, this one, this song has like really close warm vocals like she's into the mic uh feels like her nose is literally on the microphone uh when she's recording and i was like this is kind of weird but it's cool um even when her music is really simple the, the production manages to accentuate a lot of different details so you know moving into the, if you've heard the song you know there's a huge transition so moving into the transition transition into the second half um it's a huge drastic shift uh there's a lot of subtle distortion added to the drums which are really heavy they're really loud um but not too loud um and then there's guitars that explode through the mix at this point with a lot of distortion on them uh and it was a cool like not definitely not punk but it's like a really cool rock sound uh, more maybe more grunge than anything else um and i really felt this one i felt like i uh, genuinely I, <laughs> I felt like crying uh while listening to this song especially during that second half um you know the shouted background vocals that you can hear and you can literally hear billy screaming in the background i mean i assume it's her screaming um there's a screaming voice heard in the background as well and it's just uh it's tough. It's kind of hard to listen to, especially when you can relate to what she's singing about. So, um, you know, I almost wanted to shout along with the song, but it was my first time hearing it. So, um, definitely a highlight for me, super rock, you know, really big rock energy from this song. Uh, and I'd also like to hear her kind of dip into this, um, sound a little bit more in the future. So, uh, definitely a highlight. Um, and then finally track 16, this is the closing track of the album, Male Fantasy. Uh, honestly don't like how much this song made me think about my own past relationships. Uh, I felt really angsty, but it feels like an appropriate conclusion to the album. Um, you know, no matter, I guess thematically, it's like no matter where Billy finds herself as a person and in relation to, um, past relationships, uh, she's always going to find herself ruminating on what could have been or how things ended or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, it was a pretty brief song and it just kind of leaves, left me as the listener thinking about my own past and my own history and everything going on there. So, uh, really thought provoking. Um, overall, this felt like a great album. Uh, Billy and her brother Phineas, uh, if you're familiar, he produces most of her work. Uh, but I don't know if he's the sole producer for her music. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Um, but they make a great team and I genuinely enjoy uh, the music that they make together it feels like a perfect symbiotic relationship. And I honestly hope that they continue to make music together for, you know, several years. Maybe, uh, I've heard many complaints about Billy's music, especially about her vocals and her breathy delivery. And I personally believe music should be about what it makes you, f what music can make you feel. And her music happens to make me feel a lot of things. Uh, so Phineas knows how to make her vocals stand out, um, when they need to. So, you know, their minimalist approach to recording and production actually ends up creating a really intriguing experience, um, you know, for the listener. So, um, I'll be sure to revisit this project countless times as, you know, as time goes on. And honestly, I'm excited to hear what she does next. Um, so who knows, who knows how long it's going to be, but for the moment, let's just enjoy this album really decent. Um, and if you have any music that you would like me to listen to, let me know. Um, and if you watched this far, thank you. And I appreciate that. 
Um, and I apologize if you've heard any loud rumbling in the background. I'm re as I'm recording, there's like a huge thunderstorm going on outside. So hopefully that doesn't bleed through. Uh, anyway, have a great day. Thank you.